Well, this just into CBS Sports HQ from college basketball. Louisville head coach Chris Mack has acknowledged that his time with the Cardinals is coming to an end. The school's leadership meeting this afternoon to make it official. The Cardinals 11-9 so far this season, which was Mack's fourth season with the Cardinals. Told reporters that he loved his time at Louisville, but added, quote, it's a hard place. You have to win games. Taking a look at the record so far, 11-9, as I mentioned, 5-5 five and five so far this season in the AC. He took over uh, in 2018 after nine seasons at Xavier, led the Cardinals to the NCAA tournament in 2019. Of course, 2020, that was scrapped because of the pandemic, and they missed the tournament last season. Let's welcome college basketball expert Matt Norlander to talk about exactly what is going on there at Louisville. Matt, I was listening to something you said yesterday, and you're like, look, this is coming. I'm, I'm surprised it's even gotten to this point, though. Yeah, listen, I spent the past 24 hours talking to a dozen people about this situation and what has happened with Louisville. Remember, when Chris Mack was hired in 2018, he was at his alma mater, Xavier. Xavier had just gotten its first number one seat ever in program history, and he was the running away favorite to get the Louisville job. That happened as expected. And this idea that Chris Mack would no longer be employed by the University of Louisville in less than four years, uh, is still kind of unbelievable to me. I don't know if this is going to ultimately be the right thing. We don't know who Louisville will wind up uh, employing to succeed Chris Mack. It will clearly be, I would have to believe, it will be a sitting head coach with power conference experience and some NCAA tournament success, I would think. Uh, but there's still no guarantee that that coach will be better than Mack was. I know that sounds kind of wild, but take into consideration, Mack made the tournament in his first season. His second season, which got killed because of COVID-19 and there was no NCAA tournament, Louisville probably would have been a number two seed, if not a number three seed. What if we had that tournament? I know we it's hard to play the what-if game with COVID-19, but seriously, what if Louisville made the second weekend there? Last year, because COVID ruined the Cardinals' schedule, you can see they they just didn't have enough games. They they barely missed the tournament because they had they played fewer games than almost any other power conference team. And now, yes, year four, it's going sideways. Amanda, I think this is a little bit of a commentary, even though the situation is unique to itself. It's a little bit of a commentary here. If you look at what's happened in college football, this is now the second significant job to open in college basketball this season because Maryland's already open. There is. There is a lack of patience with some of these programs, and I don't know if we're ever going to go back. I'm not saying this will be an absolute every season kind of thing, but I think it could be something of a regularity going forward that one or two power conference jobs could become open before we get to March. I was talking to one sitting head coach and a power conference earlier on Wednesday, and he said, you know, when it gets bad like this, when when the milk goes bad, when the, when the situation spoils, uh, a lot of guys just, if they're going to get paid, the situation's just not worth it. Cut ties, move on, because living in that kind of toxic environment with the fan base, for a lot of people, it's just not good for their mental health. And so Chris Mack is out after less than four years, and Louisville will start a search soon without a sitting athletic director or a sitting president. Well, without all of those positions there, uh, and I agree with you, I mean, we're seeing that across sports in general, people move on very quickly, uh, short attention span and short patience there. When it comes to Louisville for the rest of this season, what can we expect now? We'll see. You know, Chris Mack uh, actually had a nice and impromptu uh, talk with a gaggle of reporters in Louisville uh, in advance of, of the meeting with uh, the Board of Trustees, and I credit him. I mean, Chris Mack said, I, ha I hold no bitterness and these guys deserve a chance to, 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 pl to play it out, and I'm root for Louisville. And he was kind of alluding to uh, the situation with this team and these guys. There's no telling if they'll rally around this or not. We bring up, this is what's happened as of late. Again, the only win at home against Boston College. Louisville's schedule going forward. I mean, the ACC is down, Amanda, but this is an 11 and nine team. And the next games are at home against Duke, tournament team, home against North Carolina, I think that UNC is going to the tournament, then at Syracuse, at a bubble Notre Dame team, and then home against the Miami team that's fighting for its tournament life. So there's, I, I don't know. I, I think that the Louisville is almost destined to kind of wobble its way to the end of the season, and then we'll wait to see who, who the coaches are going to be. For the rest of this season, they'll just try and play spoiler 
it'd be an, it'd be something of an incredible story if the Cardinals did wind up rallying and we looked up and they went from say 11 and 9 to 16 and 10 three weeks from now but there's not a lot of indication that's going to happen you said at the beginning this was possibly a little premature there for Louisville to go ahead and do this but when it comes to Chris Mack what is his future hold now ah good question um there's I, I you know I've known Chris Mack for almost a decade and uh, he's a he's a he's a prideful guy, and I say that in a, in a positive way. Uh, but if he wants to coach again, he will coach again. Uh, he's 52 years old; he's got 15 plus years ahead of coaching ahead of him if he wants it. But it's hard to say right now, here in the moment, what his future will hold. I don't think that if he chooses to be a head coach again, that job would be at a top 30 level kind of job after the way that this went right here and now. But I want to emphasize that his record overall was respectable. One, north of 60% of his games at Louisville. So maybe right now Chris Mack feels like I'm going to get a, a decent settlement out of Louisville. You know, he's made a good living. He's He's been a successful coach. Made the tournament eight out of nine years at Xavier. And for the next year or two, you know, he's, he's often been public about how wonderful a relationship he has with his family, his daughters, his young son. Maybe he wants to do that for a couple of years and he looks up when he's 54, 55 and he's got an opportunity at a solid job and he wants to get back in. I can see that happening. Uh, it's just a matter of if he wants it to happen and how soon it would happen. Because I do believe that he will be a coveted coaching candidate for many schools in the next coaching cycle or the one after that. But it's all a matter of if he wants to do it. By the way, if he doesn't, he's also capable, if he so chooses, he could also work in, in media and college basketball, be on TV. He's good at that too. So really, he's got plenty of options ahead. Matt, at the beginning of this, you didn't give us any names, but you said Louisville's head coach. Uh, they're probably looking for somebody with tournament success. Is there anybody that pops to your mind or perhaps the type of person that they will be targeting? Right. So, yes, obviously, you're going to start seeing wish list candidate stories like that. We will have one up at CBSSports.com that I want to be clear. It's just it's an assembly of names that Louisville should consider. I'm not saying any of these people will be the one that gets the job. But to me, a couple names that that pop out, uh, you'll have Kenny Payne, who's currently an assistant with the Knicks, former Kentucky assistant uh, and played at Louisville. I, I've already heard buzz about Kenny Payne uh, sitting head coaches. I'm not saying he wants to leave or would leave. I don't know, but I'm just telling you, if I'm Louisville, I am looking at Chris Holtman uh, at Ohio State. He has a great record, has had success at Butler, now at Ohio State. Kenny Payne here. Chris Holtman's another one. I think Ed Cooley at Providence. is He has done things at Providence that have never, hap that never happened before. I think Ed Cooley would certainly be a guy that I would take a look at. And then if you want to really make it interesting. I don't know if Louisville would go for this considering he played at Kentucky, but I've I've said for a year now that Mark Pope, if he wants it, will be destined to get a bigger job eventually. He's at BYU, done a wonderful job, played at Kentucky, but also could handle every single coach I mentioned there. Again, this is an initial offering. Um, I think they could all handle it. I will say with confidence that I don't think guys like Scott Drew, Mick Cronin, Matt Painter, the, uh, Bruce Pearl, I don't think any of those four, I would be surprised. I'm never going to say never, ever, but I would be surprised if any of those four names wound up coaching at Louisville next season. Matt Norlander, we appreciate it there hopping on uh, with this breaking news. Chris Mack, his time at Louisville has come to an end. Uh, of course, you gave us a heads up on that yesterday. I'm sure there will be more about this on Matt's podcast, the Ion College Basketball Podcast. Make sure to download and follow.